Femi, do you trust the Chancellor to solve the crisis? I think I know your answer. So he's dealing with people who are currently struggling, and, Bur and, and Rishi Sunak has had several chance chances. He's had 23 chances to vote on welfare benefits, and he voted to reduce welfare benefits 23 times. He's had four chances to vote to increase sickness pay. He voted, to, he voted against increasing sickness pay four times. And as far as anything he says about, like, we, ha we have to cut, we ha can't give you as much as we want because we're struggling financially, we've had the pandemic to deal with. His ability to help people is based on how much money we've got and what he predicts things about the future. And if he looks at how much money we've wasted over the last few years, he's wasted and his, his government has wasted. When we look at the billions wasted during the, during the pandemic, we, for example, they spent 156 million pounds of taxpayer money on a company that was run by, the, by a Tory advisor, and that was on PPE that didn't work. Why? Because as Transparency International, the international corruption organization revealed, 99% of their contracts were awarded without any competition to make sure those companies could actually do the job. They have wasted billions of our money, so of course... Does that link directly to you not trusting Rishi Sunak, then? It means that they're not going to spend the money that people desperately need because they spent money on their friends instead. But he also had a fairly imaginative approach to government spending to help people who would have been placed in absolutely desperate positions um, had he not been able to come forward and support them. And it's really interesting that the package of measures that he did put yeah. forward during the pandemic very unlikely he's going to match that today. Yeah, so that's here's the, thing. the thing. He said he said all that like he was going to help people, and then we and then he put us through the worst recession in the G7. Not just the worst recession, recession that we've had in 300 years. We had the worst recession of all G7 countries. So that was not a but success. But look at the growth now post pandemic. Yes, look at the growth now. If you dig the furthest down, you're going to have to rise the furthest back up in order to, in order to get back no, to but normal. It, what's the alternative? The alternative is to give people the money that they need and to support them through the worst cost of living crisis. And he said that he will stand by people who are facing this worst cost of living crisis for four decades. While raising national insurance on people, while increasing ben benefits by 3% when, in when inflation has risen by 8%, so he's keep so essentially that's a reduction in benefits, he is not looking after people. People are struggling. People are struggling to heat their homes, feed their kids, pay for fuel, fuel their cars, and he is not doing enough. Why? Because he doesn't care and has never cared. And I just have this instinct that it will come good. I may be wrong, but I, I just feel that it, uh, you know, I hope that it, it will. It just feels like Stockholm Syndrome, because, yes, we've had to rely on the, on the Tories to get us through, through the pandemic, but they could have done more. And we know they could have done more, because, as I said before, worst recession in the G7. So he has not got a good record in terms of, you said, the imaginative stuff that he did to help us through the pandemic. Yes, but it still wasn't good enough, and it was worse than other but countries. But it's not a bottomless, you know, in terms of the pandemic, it wasn't a bottomless pit. Yes, there was I, only... There was a balance to be struck. And, and this is where things like GDP growth com comes into it. When you've damaged the economy to the extent to which he has done via Brexit. The old, let's not forget, these politicians, they are not experts in, in, in economics. They rely on things like the Office of Budgetary Responsibility, that branch of government for economic decisions. And they're the ones who've said, what you've done to this economy via Brexit is twice as bad as the pandemic. So yes, if he says he can't afford to pay for the stuff that we need right now, he's the reason. Final quick thought from you, Femi, because we're running out of time. Well, we need, we need, what we need is a government that actually cares about working class people. And if you look at what happened in 2020, when they had the A-level scandal where they used an algorithm that would deliberately give the best grades from state schools to private schools and, and deprive uh, working class kids of, of free school meals, they don't care enough.